this is all where it starts. Making the design on the CAD itself. This is a ring has just made on the CAD. It's been printed on a 3D printer. And then from here it goes to the casting and everything else, like the diamond setting, cleaning, polishing, and all that. This is just made for rendering, which it would look like this. Just for the customer to see how it looks like before we finalize it so we could get her proof. Uh, my name is Hobi Kechejian, one of the owner of Jaguar Jewelry Casting NY Inc. in New York City. And this is the casting room. So what we do over here, we do A to Z jobs. Like you bring pictures, you need styles, we'll, we'll make it from, from beginning to the end. These are casting trees already. Those came out of the casting. This is 18 karat white gold. Okay. These are our ovens. This is the gold casting, which works on vacuum and pressure. And these is the platinum machine casting which works, it's a centrifugal system. Right now I am working on cleaning the trees. This is how the tree comes out of the casting when it's done. We just cleaned it with the air pressure and water to get all the investment out. So now we're gonna dump it in the acid to get the right color to it. color comes back to life after putting it in the acid. This is silver. So this is all where it starts the process of the casting. It's usually someone would be shooting waxes from the molds and then they will clean it, get it ready, prepare it to be on a tree. We use one of the rods and then this goes like you guys just saw on the silver. This will be added in here. And then that the process starts after this. Jack is a diamond setter and he is one of the owner of Jaguar Casting. These are all diamond setters. Carlo is a jeweler. Kevo is cleaning the pieces under the microscope and he's also one of the owners of Jaguar Jewelry Casting. My name is Mihal Akiminisian. I'm a diamond seller from Istanbul. I've been doing this almost 50 years. And I learned this trade in the jewelry district of uh, Istanbul. And there's a certain amount of uh, setting that I do, especially power setting and a channel setting. 
in privacy in any kind of a setting that uh, you can imagine that I do. And I came in this country in 1970 and I start the New York trade in 47th Street and still I'm in the 47th Street. Hi Mike. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, can you finish this for me today? By the way, please. It's a rush? It is, yeah. yeah? Okay. The customer is leaving tonight, so. Okay. And right. make a nice shop as you always do. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. You. The 80% of the 47th Street is uh, Armenian and we have lots of friends that uh, we, we always walk together on this uh, trade over here. So a lot of, a lot of times uh, we share some work together. If I cannot do something, you know, I give somebody else to do it. Our location is in the mezzanine, but sometimes people downstairs oh, okay. Oh, yeah. exchange. They need anything, they come upstairs and they bring the stuffs that we had to do because they have the customers over there waiting for for them. My name is Harant Gulian. Uh, I have been living in New York for 45 years. Originally Ukraine Gerci, but lived in Istanbul for 19 years. Uh, my, I was been I've been in the trades for since the age of 12, and my varbet was Onnik Baharian, one of the top jewelers in Turkey. Obviously, everybody knows that in Turkey, the jewelry industry goes back for centuries from the Ottoman Empire. And today, uh, I'm very proud to say that 6% of the world jewelers are Armenians. Any major city that you go to, whether it's Los Angeles, Buenos Aires, Paris, Middle East, there must be an Armenian at the major jewelry district. Because this is the a trade that Armenians have been working on for centuries. As far as the um, 47th Street is concerned, today some of the top setters and jewelers happens to be Armenians in large quantity. Uh, I have a magazine before me. Uh, this is put up by AJA, which is the Armenian Jewelers Association. And the picture that you see, this beautifully handmade boat uh, created by Amadis Biris in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, he's one, considered one of the top jewelers right now in Turkey. This is his creation and this is one of the examples why Armenians have been so talented in this industry. My name is Berg Gökberg. I'm the owner of the Crown Findings, which is established in 1983 and the 47th Street of uh, New York City in the Jewelers District. My name is Ardem Aslanian. Uh, my company name is Simon Ardem. I got in this business in uh, 1990 after I graduated college. Uh, my father was a diamond dealer in the business and my brother was also uh, in the diamond business. So I graduated with a fine arts degree and a political science degree. So no money in that so I had to pay the bill so I, I entered this business in uh, 1990. What we do is basically we buy diamonds from all over the world including local, including from the public. We recut it to something better, hopefully. Um, 
me and my brother, we went to a rough diamond school in Canada. They don't teach that course in America. So we had to go to Canada for three months to learn um, how to cut diamonds, recut diamonds. And after 27 years of experience, still learning a lot about it. Um, the big plus to be Armenian in this industry because we dominate this industry as far as jewelry and diamond jewelry end of it. The diamond end of it, there's a lot of other people involved, bigger groups than us, but to be able to go from A, which is to cut the diamonds, all the way to finishing the jewelry and possibly even selling to the public, it's a big plus to be an Armenian. Um, we are, I think, in New York City, about 300 strong at every aspect of the jewelry end. Um, from basic work to highest quality workmanship through either Van Cliff and Arpel or Tiffany Blue Book or Cartier. Every aspect of it, it goes to an Armenian at one point down the line. So it's a, it's a difficult industry because we're at the diamond end of it, we're a minority. We're competing with uh, uh, bigger or, uh, ethnic groups, religious groups, but the industry is changing to our benefit because it's becoming easier access to the rough diamonds and diamond source. It's changing from Israel to Belgium to more India and more Russia. Um, it's that way it's helping us um, and if we could make the Armenian jewelers and diamond dealers around the country around the world work together better it's a huge plus for everybody I'm a vice president of Armenian Jewelers Association in New York City uh, we hold our meetings in this office and we benefit tremendously being an Armenian in New York City in diamond business and diamond jewelry business because I'm able to go buy a diamond, recut it, and then have an Armenian guy design the ring and have another Armenian guy do the model, cast it, finish it, and I could supply the diamond. And that's an edge over other groups in, uh, in New York City. Uh, my name is Ashad Logian. I am the founder of uh, Shadow Crown. We're a jewelry company based out of New York. And what our company is known is uh, for developing and creating uh, models and designs for various companies. However, we primarily concentrate on our own design, which is Shadow Crown. It's um, a concept idea where a ring made out of four components could be worn in uh, 21 different variations. Uh, obviously everything is done in our shop and uh, handset, hand fabricated using uh, 18 karat gold and platinum and fine quality gems and diamonds. Hello, my name is Emily Bikujian. We are at Pico Jewelry. Pico is a full service jewelry store offering its clients unique diamond jewelry pieces engagement and wedding rings, rare color gemstones, and one-on-one -on -one customized handmade jewelry creations.